our Luba robot mower has mowed the complete yard about four times now, so I thought it was a good time to do a health check on it itself. First thing it's obvious is it's dirty. Just being outside, getting wet, dust blowing around, it has a coating of dirt over the exterior, so we're gonna clean that up. We're also gonna take a look at the business end. And actually, there's a little bit of grass and a few pieces of leaves in here, but it is quite clean. So we're not supposed to use high pressure water. I don't like to use water in general to clean most things up because it gets into motors and bearings and grease and degrades them. So we're gonna use a small scraper and, and maybe some compressed air and just get, get off some of the pieces of debris. But overall, things don't look too bad. Our razors, we're gonna check these out. They are flippable. So I do see a little bit of wear on some of the cutting edges, but it's really not bad. Some of these little nooks and crannies where there's a little bit of grass or debris buildup are pretty small. So even a conventional scraper is not really gonna fit in there. So I'm just using a standard blade screwdriver. This is a composite deck. So there's not a rust concern and things are pretty dry under here. So this isn't a big deal if this, if these components stay in place, but I like to keep things kind of clean and it might affect cutting performance if we've got a buildup of debris in certain areas. Now we're gonna take a look at the, the cutting components themselves and they have these little button head screws that hold them in place. They do get packed up with, with grass a bit, so a little wire brush or something to clean out the socket. So the lawnmower does come with a little Allen key to remove the button head screws for our cutters. <clears throat> There's Loctite on these fasteners so they don't come out the easiest. You can see basically it's a double-sided razor blade. This is the cutting edge that we've been using. And it's been dulled up a little bit. There's a noticeable difference between unused portion and the used portion, but there's no nicks or damage to it at all. These socket head, these little button head screws likely over time will take damage. Over time, these little button head screws will likely take damage here and get rounded over and hard to get a Allen key in there well. So the replacement set does come with new ones, so that's very good to see. Um, if this high center's on a rock or, or gets contact damage with something, it's gonna round that over and you'll be hard to remove over time. So that's awesome to see their little kit comes with new ones. So these cutter he cutting heads are flippable and reversible. So it was being used in that position so we could flip it over so you've got the other side of this cutting edge in addition to rotating it. So you've got this cutting edge plus this cutting edge that you can use just by flipping it over. We were using this cutting edge so the easiest thing to do is to flip it over and start using this cutting surface. And the cool thing about these versus a conventional lawnmower blade, a conventional lawnmower blade, you can't coat it. Um, generally what you do is regrind the surface to get a cutting edge back. And it's just on one side, this has a dual bevel to get a sharper edge. And you can harden or plate these type of things because they're not large metal assemblies spinning very fast. You don't have to worry about them being brittle, breaking apart and flying and hurting people. A conventional rotary mower blade, you have to, so they, they keep them ductile and do not harden them. 
so their edge wears away very quickly. Um, but with these smaller components, you can do some uh, fancier things metallurgically to make sure they keep a sharp edge. So I was thinking about getting my um, sharpening stone out and sharpening each one of these to see if, because they are such a small component, we could likely sharpen them. But because I've got four cutting edges on each one, I'm not even going to mess with it. I'm just going to put this back in place and move on. So it is interesting. Originally, I did think this was um, rotate freely in place. But all of the other ones that have been used are not. So what happens, I believe, is grass gets packed in there and just keeps it locked in the one position. Doesn't seem to affect performance, but just an interesting observation. I have the blades all switched over with a new cutting edge. That's about all we can do under here, cleaned up, knocked off the debris. The motors, I believe, are sealed in each wheel. We've got 24 volt, 80 watt, calls out the type of motor. So I haven't looked to see if you can buy replacement parts for this, but basically this is sealed up at the hub here. I suppose that maybe there's maintenance you could do over time there, but I'm just going to leave it as is. Often in those cases, leaving it sealed up is better than opening it up and exposing it to the potential of, of contamination. We do have a couple rubber bellows here at the pivoting front axle. So I'll just keep an eye on those. Again, if they rip or tear, I don't think there's that much we can do about it. I don't know that there's replacement parts available for this, but it's just one thing to know. All of the bearings in that are contained in the hub itself. We do have a ball joint here on the suspension part, so I'll watch that. Maybe I'll spray that with some WD-40 uh, after washing it just to, to keep that free of debris and, and clean. Uh, in the back, same basic situation, but there's no moving parts. Simply a couple supports for the hub motors and the wheel assemblies and the wire running through there so it can supply power and control to the motors. Overall, pretty simple assembly that should be fairly reliable, but not very serviceable unless we're just talking, you know, potentially you could take these hub motors apart and replace gears and things like that. There are in there, um, but likely that's going to be just a unbolt and full replacement, but we'll see how reliable that is over time. Up top, there's not much to do here. We've got our four ultrasonic sensors up top. We've got our push sensors on the side, our front bumper. So I think basically just make sure that these components aren't loose and that they're clean. So I'm just going to give this thing basically a car wash with a car wash with a wax in it to keep the surface a little bit dirt resistant. I don't think that's going to do much besides keep the ultrasonic sensors clean, but just look better, make me feel good. The tires are solid rubber. There's no air in there, so there's nothing to service there. After washing the outside of your Luba, it's a good idea to pay special attention to the charging contacts on the back of the Luba. You can see in this picture, they are boxed in the red outline, the two goldish metal metallic contacts. I take uh, some rubbing alcohol and a paper towel and just clean those off to make sure um, you can get good conduction between the base and those contact points. What we see here in the red box is those contact points on the charging base. And so do the same thing with those. Take some rubbing alcohol on a paper towel 
and clean those up. That will remove any buildup from those and make sure you get a nice electrical contact between your charging base and the Luba unit itself. There you have it, pretty simple maintenance. We'll keep our Luba healthy and cutting another day. Is the cleaning and all that really necessary? Likely not, you could likely never clean it for years and just have it run and run away. I like to keep things clean and maintain. There's not a lot of greasing or that we can do on our Luba. I do have to give a squirt of WD-40 to those front suspension components. But other than that, it's basically cleaning and maintaining those cutting edges. It's ready to cut another day. Thanks for watching. Adios.